I've got another question for the synoptic questions playlist. So this one covers the topics of redox, ion equations, acid-base titrations, and some general practical skills questions. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So the overall equation that's taking place in stage one is between a metal and an aqueous acid. So we're going to form the metal salt, so it's going to be a metal chloride salt, and hydrogen. So the equation is going to look like this. So metal solid plus two moles of HCl aqueous gives a mole of aqueous MCl2. It's MCl2 because the metal, we're told, is in the plus two oxidation state. So we need two Cl minus ions to go with the M2 plus, and we make H2 gas as well. So in terms of oxidation, the metal has been oxidised, so it's gone from its zero oxidation state to 2 plus, so it's gone up by 2, and it's done that by losing 2 electrons. The reduction half equation is the 2 moles of H plus ions, each one gaining electrons, so a total of 2 electrons gained, forming a mole of H2. For the next part of the question, we're going to use the overall equation to help with the observations. So when all of the metal has reacted, we're going to stop seeing bubbles of hydrogen. And the other observation, when all of the metals reacted, it will completely have dissolved into the acid. Another equation to write, but this time an ionic equation. So in stage three, we've got to write the ionic equation for the reaction taking place in the titration. Well, I've just copied that from the information above. So that's the actual reaction taking place in the titration. So it's the straightforward ionic equation for neutralisation. So the aqueous hydroxide ion is reacting with the aqueous H plus ion and making liquid H2O. So moving on to the calculation now, it's quite complicated this because there's just so much information to try and process. So I've done my usual thing by creating a little flow chart of what's happened. So I'll just talk through that and then we'll go through the calculation. So they've taken 100 cm cubed of 2.1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl, which we're told is an excess of the acid, and they've put that in with 6.9 grams of metal M. So the metal's been turned into its plus 2 oxidation state, so we've got M aqueous M2 plus ions in there, but we've also got some leftover HCl. That's then fed into a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask, so we made up to 250. So we've still got the same moles of M2 plus and HCl in here than we had in here. And then 25 cm cubed of that is taken out and titrated with this concentration of sodium hydroxide. And we're told that the reaction that takes place in the titration is between the sodium hydroxide and the HCl. And we've also got the titration results. So the first thing we're going to do is work out the mean titra from these results and then I'm going to use that to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide were involved in the titration. So there's the three titras. Obviously, one and three are concordant because they're within 0 0.10 of each other. That's too far away, so we're going to ignore number two. So that makes the mean titra 27.25 cm cubed. So that means the moles of sodium hydroxide concentration times volume in decimeters cubed is coming out at 0 0.00872 moles which means that the moles of HCl in the 25 cm cubed for the titration is the same because it's a one-to-one -one ratio between the sodium hydroxide and HCl, which means that the moles of HCl in this flask is going to be 10 times greater, so 0.0872 moles. Now remember that the moles of hydrochloric acid in this volumetric flask are the moles of hydrochloric acid that were left over when this reaction took place. So if we work out the moles of hydrochloric acid that we started with, we know that there was that many moles left over after the reaction in that beaker. We can work out how many moles of HCl had actually reacted with the metal. So the initial moles at the very start of the process was this many, so just concentration times that volume in decimeters cubed. So the difference between that and what was left in that beaker comes out at 0.1228. So now if we factor in the mole ratio for the reaction between the hydrochloric acid and the metal, we need to divide the moles of HCl by 2 to get the moles of M. So that's coming out at 0 
So we're in a position now to work out the MR. So the mass, the 6.9 divided by the moles, is going to give us that MR, and then we can identify what M was. So the MR comes out at 112.4, which means that the metal M was cadmium. So very well done if you got that right. So moving on to part B now, so the amount of moles of carbon dioxide released in the reaction, well the mass of CO2 was 2.75 grams, that was just the difference between those two mass readings there, divide by the MR of CO2, 44, 0.0625 moles. So moving on to the next part, we've got to calculate the molar mass of the X2CO3 and then identify the metal. So that's just a reminder of the equation. I've already established the moles of X2CO3 being the same as the moles of CO2 because this one-to-one -one ratio. Next thing I'm doing is working out the mass of X2CO3 used in the experiment. So that's 14.57 grams. So that's from the first two mass readings in the table. So the MR of X2CO3, mass over moles, 233.12. So to identify what metal X is, we need to work out its MR. So the first thing we'll do is subtract the MR of CO3, which is 60. So that means X2 has a mass of 173.12. So we'll divide that by 2 and get the MR of 1X. So that's coming out at 86.6. Now we've got to be really careful now because on the periodic table, you've got two um, atoms that are very close to that. So we've got rubidium which is 85.5 and we've got strontium at 87.6. So to get to the right answer we've got to factor in the formula of X2CO3. The carbonate ion has a 2 minus charge so that means that the X, the metal X, must be a 1 plus ion. Well rubidium forms a 1 plus ion because it's in group 1. Strontium forms a 2 plus ion so its carbonate would just be SrCO3 or XCO3. So the answer was rubidium. So well done again if you got that right. So moving on to part C now. So the student could weight the constant mass to make sure that the reaction was complete. As just a reminder of the reaction, it produces a gas. So once the gas has stopped being produced, the mass will remain constant and that's a sign that the reaction's over. So moving on to the final part, if some of the carbon dioxide is dissolved in water, that means the calculated mass of CO2 is going to drop. So that means the calculated moles of CO2 is going to be lower. If the moles of CO2 is lower, that means that the calculated moles of X2CO3 is also going to be lower. So then if you factor in how you calculate MR now, so mass over moles, if the moles is lower, that means the MR is actually going to be higher. 